think most of us, hopefully in the room, love this brand. I certainly do. Uh, there are a lot that don't, uh, unfortunately, around the world. Um, and actually, it's interesting to think that this company hasn't really, apart from the last few years, ever succeeded. Um, it's only 2009 when the company was facing bankruptcy. And um, it's had four what I call foster parents. And it's only now that it's on its own journey uh, that it's starting to succeed, um, which is quite a scary thought. And I think, you know, having spent the last two years there, um, for me personally, it's lost a sense of who it was in the last 10 years. I think it knew who it was in that world, absolutely. Um, and actually, it was right for that world. But the modern world today, we call it the modern world in Land Rover to push everyone that way, um, it's different. And actually, what people's relationships with, with SUVs are and is, is different. And paying a large amount of money when you don't take them out of a city seems like when you kind of put the, pay, well, put the prices on the paper, like a tough decision to make. Um, it's all, also probably fair to say that in that period of you know, finding ourselves as a brand again, you know, it's very hard to know what sort of conversation you want to have with customers and consumers, customers, non-customers, you know, the outside world. And I kind of have had the chance, as I say, to reflect a lot on the work that's been done. And of course, not having originated that work, kind of been able to judge it quite openly and honestly. Um, and I do see a lot of uh, a lack of a sense of who we are and, and what we stand for in the work. And I think, you know, when I joined two years ago, that's where I started. Um, but we spent 12 months actually defining what, or redefining what the brand stands for um, in the customers of the future's hearts and minds. And really importantly, why people love this brand. In fact, it was interesting that when we asked for all the documents from Insights on the brand and in all the markets bespoke and, and, and continuous, I'd noted that out of the, I think it was 96 documents that we had, 70, 80 were about what people disliked about the brand. It was so obsessed, this brand, with what people didn't like about it, it had forgotten actually what people loved about it. Um, so actually, you know, as a marketeer, um, actually working out what people love and selling that back to people is, you know, what I've been trying to do with this brand. But that's where the journey started 12 months ago. And once we decided, you know, and agreed, which was a very collaborative task, and, and John, my boss, gave me lots of time to do this, which was fantastic, um, we then started to uh, look at the world in which this brand interacted. And unfortunately, you know, it was not helping itself. I, I used to say that we spent about half a billion pounds a year giving people a slap around the face. Um, if you loved this brand and wanted to be with this brand, and you actually liked the product, which I think sometimes gets in the way of, a, of the relationship, in fact, a lot of the time it gets in the way of the relationship, when you come to start to realize that burning desire to marry your emotional bond with the reality, it kind of falls far short. Um, and, you know, this is um, a little bit of that experience that you might have encountered. You may encounter for a little bit longer, not too much longer, in, in resisting you, just making sure that you are absolutely determined to buy into this brand. We put lots of barriers and hurdles in your way just in case. Um, uh, but we spent a lot of time, uh, sorry, and, and I was going to say that, you know, again, this is one of those honest slides. You know, th this is how people's dreams get dashed on the floor as they start to immerse themselves in the world of, uh, of Land Rover. At the top is their current passion and heart and dream. You know, the, the, you know this is just the global website, by the way. So uh, without, you know, too much work from our, our, I guess, our marketing efforts of 24, 36 months ago. But you can see actually how many people go, you know what? I've battled on. I actually want you to take me for a test drive in these things. We do make it hard for ourselves. Range Rover Evoque, I guess, was the start of uh, the change of heart, definitely. Um, and you know, as a vehicle you know, and as a design, 
and most importantly as a signpost of what this brand wanted to be in the future, it was a wonderful project to, um, to work on. It, it started many months before I joined the company. In fact, I came in right at the tail of, of actually just going to start of sales. And they had 18 months to talk about it without the product, too much about the product, had the concept but not the product, um, and in a white space because we weren't running anything out, which is fantastic. And we filled it with some fantastic work, some great content, which drove some really um, knowledgeable and qualified interest. It's fair to say, though, we also kind of were a bit machine gun, and we were just a little bit like an excited schoolboy in that sweetie shop, um, trying to eat as much as we possibly could, and you know where that tends to end. Um, so some of the work, I think, is... Um, this is, 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 a, is a wonderful reflection of what the proposition is and what its relationship to the brand is and what the brand means. But some of it you know, falls a little bit short. I'm going to share my first bit of content, and I guess you guys can be the judge. I'm going to let you choose. Chocolate-covered donut, jelly, sprinkles. They all represent a fork in the road of our lives we take. One fork ends it for you. And the other fork ends it for me. Choices can be hard. So to make them easier, you're going to use this guy. How this story turns out is up to you. Grandma? So you really want to do this? I want you to undress me, Henry. Just need to loosen up. Get a little crazy. You, Henry. It's up to fate. Choose, boy. I should have warned you about the um, Spanish uh, subtitles. I wasn't just trying to make out it was even potentially uh, uh, more confusing than it might have been. But I, I don't connect to that bit of work. Um, most importantly because that's not reflective of what the Land Rover brand stands for. And I'm very happy for content to exist in the world of Land Rover that doesn't have product in it. It's not about that. But it has to share the values of what Land Rover stands for and it has to absolutely live the values of the proposition that we're trying to connect the audience to. And I'm afraid, for me, that was us getting a little maybe too excited and forgetting all of that and just going with maybe what we thought was a good idea at the time. Um, this has been a, uh, a much talked about project inside our company, um, uh, particularly by Jerry, our chief designer, <laughs> because Victoria stood up on stand in Beijing and told everyone that she designed the Range Rover Evoque <laughs> limited edition. And I can't actually use the words that Jerry now uses to describe how he felt about that. Um, and you know what, actually, for the world of Beijing and emerging markets, and what products and brands like ours stand for for them, this worked perfectly. Unfortunately, the rest of the world didn't agree with that. And it actually disconnected us from a huge set of pre-existing customers who had a very different relationship with our brand. Again, without consciously understanding what that relationship is and how you need to manage its execution, guardrail it, no matter where you are in the world, we're a global brand, uh, or what product you're talking about, you know, this can happen. Um, but it's really important to say that Range Rover Evoque did actually put the spotlight on what I would describe as 21st century marketing. Against my colleagues today, I might take it back 500 years, but... Uh, and, and it gave us, you know, a platform to have those sorts of conversations with senior management for the first time 
inside this company. This company has been a, is a very traditional British Midlands car manufacturing company. Um, it absolutely loves 30 second TVCs uh, and it loves them living on their own um, in a one way manner. Enjoy it and we'll see you at the dealership. Uh, and you know, things <laughs> have absolutely moved on and, and this no more, uh, you know, as, as, as kind of part of that evidence best describes now that the journey in which most of our customers, non-customers, future customers take is a digital one. And actually where we need to connect with them is in this world, uh, not in the 30 second world. In fact, the role of the 30 second is incredibly different now for us. Um, and actually, excitingly inside the company, this is a really dull slide, uh, is the du it gets the dullest slide of the evening award. Uh, but it's, we're rebuilding our whole team uh, and the way that this brand interacts, engages and communicates with current customers and, and importantly future customers because we need a lot of them. Um, and it's very exciting, but I think Mark mentioned it and, and I think I'm sure everyone would echo the point that when the brand, when you, when you are in charge or responsible for a brand such as Land Rover, which is a premium brand with luxury products as we best describe it, um, you have to retain in everything you do the integrity of that brand in every single facet and experience and platform and execution. And if we, as we race towards our 21st century, which by then will be your 22nd century, um, producing work of what we may have seen in the past and not work what we, that as we need to aspire in the future, we will have lost sight again of ourselves. So upholding integrity in our content is absolutely paramount. That, that is our absolute sacrosanct. It has to add value to our brand. It absolutely has to add value to the product and, and it has to add value to the customer. If it doesn't do all three of those things, we don't do it. We get a lot of great ideas and a lot of exciting uh, thoughts and initiatives from some great people, some great partners and some you know, great talent inside the company. But it has to go through those gates or else we don't do it anymore. And that's taken a little bit of a step forward um, inside our company because actually what we've now realised is what we were just thought we were late to the party at actually could be for us our competitive advantage. Um, we, we are outgunned uh, ridiculously, not as bad as Jaguar, um, Ian's in, in you're the audience, but outgunned ridiculously by our much bigger, I would say probably more sophisticated uh, and much deeper pocketed um, German rivals. And, but actually in a recent audit of how we all invest in paid owned earned has found that they are much further ahead than us. In fact, maybe we might be a little bit ahead of them. And actually, if we can accelerate that move to what we more describe as owned, aid, uh, owned and paid with a conscious understanding of the interrelationships between all three, then actually we might be able to get that more engaged share of voice that we desperately require um, uh, uh, to, to drive the future customer numbers we, we have committed to our, to our new owner. So it's a very exciting time. Now, I can put a slide up like that and I have to present that slide on Friday to Dr. Spade. Um, what's behind that in terms of the change in the way that our marketing communications function operates is insane. Um, it's different people in our teams, it's different partners, the way we spend our budget, how much budget we need, our creative development process, the way we channel plan, the way we plan. It all just turns it all on its head, which is what we're un undertaking at the moment. And it's great. I mean, we are very blessed because it's a great brand, but also because we've been given the chance to change this brand. It doesn't want to market in the way it's done it, and it wants to change that to tap into where our customers actually are waiting for us um, now. Range Rover Sport, which was revealed to the world, the next new generation of it, uh, on the 26th of March in New York, was our first chance to stop talking about it, um, stop the thinking and the theory, and actually put it into practice, uh, which was... You know, it wasn't a bad project to work on. Um, and actually for us, you know, it was fantastic to have the opportunity to start to put that 21st century way of thinking into the execution of this journey. Um, to think about how we can connect to the audience before 
showing them a vehicle in a way that we've never done before during a run out and having the confidence of the company to allow us to do that. Um, to create a destination where people can spend time with the vehicle that has value to them is a good experience of, of the vehicle and a great experience of the brand. Um, and you know, to take advantage of what have historically been uh, really closed events, affairs, in a way that we've never done before. I, I was, um, uh, when we launched Range Rover, I'll be very honest with you now, here's another one. Um, I was at home and my boss rang me and he said, so why haven't we got all the content from the launch of Range Rover up on the website? Why haven't we got all that stuff up there? It's fantastic. I went, well, it, it was Mark Knopfler playing Money's for Nothing while people stood around ignoring him, drinking champagne, eating canapes. And I'm not sure at this moment in our lives that's actually going to help people make a positive choice towards either a brand <laughs> or Range Rover. And, it, and, you know, with this one, he said, well, you know what? You do it the way you want to do it then. And that's what we did. You know, it was actually... The event was a live broadcast, and we brought a production team in who um, do MTV Awards to do the production of it. it want, we wanted people to connect to it and actually feel part, actually more special than actually being there, and feel part of the launch around the world, which the next day we started to get some of that you know, data in on, on how many people had connected to this, how many people had visited the site, spent there, completed configuration, we, we couldn't quite fathom it. We were, and I think our realisation at that moment in time was, as a brand, people love Land Rover. They love these products. If we serve this content up to them in the right way, at the right time, using the right channel, the amount of interest in this brand is absolutely insane. It uh, was incredibly encouraging. I don't think ever John ever believed the data, but uh, <laughs> we, did, we did verify. Um, so the last piece of content I'm going to show you is a stage on from Reveal. Um, the whole program for Range Rover Sport has been about giving people reasons to believe in Range Rover Sport and sharing a part of the journey of designing and engineering Range Rover Sport as, you know, uh, as that content again as a brand who has authenticity as one of its cornerstones, this had to be real content. Um, it had to be um, a good reflection of what the product's key attributes are, but also a wonderful reflection of the Land Rover brand. Um, the, we set out um, uh, to give Range Rover Sport a series of challenges uh, to really push it to show people around the world just how much of a Land Rover this Range Rover Sport is. We call Range Rover Sport the most dynamic Land Rover ever. And um, the first one of these challenges is, which is the film, the centerpiece of the film is uh, Pikes Peak Hill Climb in, um, in Colorado. And we have a number of others that we are pushing Range Rover Sport, genuine Range Rover Sport to its absolute limit. We don't know what will happen, which is a bit worrying. Um, from a safety point of view. It's gone through risk assessment. Um, the next one's the empty quarter. And again, we, we're trying to avoid Yemen at the moment. But um, uh, again, we want to absolutely be authentic in the way we execute these. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I have to say my favorite driver is every driver that comes to Pikes Peak to race. I feel it takes a great amount of courage to take on this mountain. I feel it's a good way to get rid of your fear. It's a way to come to the summit of the most beautiful place in the world. Yeah, the weather is something you want to always watch. These clouds aren't troublesome at all. I'm just kind of watching them build. Typically, our storms will build up here around uh, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, it's really a big unknown right now how we're going to do. It's a standard production SUV. 
and uh, the only modifications is the roll cage for safety. So um, if I can get under 13 minutes, I think I'd be really happy. Kalenbach's car was up to 130 miles an hour. I just sliced through the tree like, like a knife. This cutter is capable of cutting through the roll bar in a matter of minutes. The case of Paul Dahlenbach's crash, um, by the time we arrived on the scene uh, and had him uh, out of the vehicle was less than five minutes. Yeah, last year was uh, pretty scary. I Just off the start line, uh, my throttle stuck in, in fifth gear at 135 miles per hour. Um, really looking forward to going up there this time for the first time since that accident and getting past that turn two where it all happened. This is a spot where Paul Dahlenbach left the race course about 1,300 feet after the starting line. Went through here, knocked down eight or nine trees before he landed another 60, 80 feet behind me. Engineer's Corner. We've had multiple cars off here every year. Um, we've had three cars at once. We've had a truck go 45 feet in there and land up in a tree that was 35 feet high. We had to cut the tree down at the end of the day. How am I doing? This is the middle of the fourth leg. We had a car go off here last year. He ended up 350 feet right down there. Anybody else would have needed a parachute. It was unbelievable. The car was wonderful. Plenty of power up here. Um, you know, in this altitude, you lose you lose about 40% of your power, but it didn't feel like it. It just pulled all the way up. I had plenty of it. I'm pretty happy with that run.